Hey everybody, it's Ryan from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Bank Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games for Thursday, March 14th, 2024. And if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, include my college basketball bank shop best bet. You can find us at the premium picks tab, pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Thursday in college hoops. First up, we see Kent State and Toledo. This one's going to be an 11 a.m. Eastern start time. It's going to be on ESPN+, Plus, a part of the quarterfinal round of the MAC Conference Tournament. Now, these teams just played against each other to end the regular season. It was an 86-71 win for Toledo. However, that was at Toledo. This is a neutral site game. Kent State's playing with revenge. Their season's on the line, and we're getting a lot of points now because of recent results, because of these teams' records on paper. I think that, you know, Toledo's a bit overvalued, and Kent State's been undervalued for quite a while this year. You know, Kent State had a lot of expectations going into the season. They won the MAC last year. Yes, they lost a lot of production from last year's team, but they still had a lot of talent on the roster on paper, and I still think this team has enough, even with the current injuries, to compete in this ball game. I don't know if they're going to win it outright, but, you know, at least cover the spread. Toledo, their defense is not great. This is a potent offense, but their defense is ranked 259th in adjusted defensive efficiency, 350th in effective field goal percentage. No lead is safe. And that's an important concept to, you know, to think about in March basketball conference tournament and NCAA tournament play. We have seen a ton of blown leads, double digit leads, 15 point leads just gone uh, in a matter of, you know, seconds, it seems like on these big runs in the second half by the opposition. So with a defense like Toledo's, they could be up big at halftime and then the lead's gone in a second. It wouldn't surprise me. You know, Kent State, I do think shot quality wise is an underrated team. Fundamentally, I mean, we saw in that last game, even though they lost by 15, they had Kent State had more offensive rebounds. They had double the offensive rebounds. The turnover battle was the same, 11 to 11. And both teams had 17 assists on their field goals. We know Toledo made a lot more. Kent State had 68% of their field goals. Uh, there was an assist on those. So they were you know, moving the ball pretty well in that ball game. It just came down to the fact Toledo was 59% from two-point range and 42% from the perimeter. Kent State 47 and 35 just wasn't good enough. I think in this game at the neutral site, I'm going to go with Kent State plus the points. Next up, it's Minnesota and Michigan State. This one's going to be 12 p.m. Eastern on the Big Ten Network, the second round of the Big Ten Conference Tournament. Neither of these teams are in great form going into this conference tournament. Minnesota, the ATS Darlings, who covered a lot of spreads this season, they ended the season losing you know, four of the last five games. Michigan State, a program that we know has been one of the best in college basketball and one of the best in this conference in the last decade plus, they lost four of the last five games to end the regular season, including a one-point loss to Indiana on the road in the final day of the regular season. But to me, Tom Izzo in March is really tough to bet against. This is an experienced roster, one of the more experienced teams in this conference. They're fundamentally sound, and I think they have a big advantage in the turnover battle, both on offense and defense. The Spartans do a great job of taking care of the basketball. They force a lot of turnovers. Minnesota, they're ranked right now 212th in turnover percentage offensively. At a neutral site game, you just you really got to take care of the basketball. I think Michigan State does a much better job at doing so in this ball game. Then you look at the neutral site experience for both of these teams. Minnesota didn't really have much. They played a pretty weak non-conference schedule, the weakest in, in uh, strength of schedule, according to Kempom. And then Michigan State, while they lost their two neutral site games, they played really tough ones against Duke and Arizona, single-digit ball games, much, you know, much better teams in Minnesota, and they were competitive games. And then the other semi-home game was a win against Baylor. So Michigan State, much better neutral site resume, uh, a team that's known for playing well in March and in this conference tournament. I'm going to go with Michigan State in this one and lay the points. Next up, we'll go back to that MAC tournament as Bowling Green takes on Central Michigan. This one, 1.30 Eastern, is going to be on ESPN+. You know, we faded Central Michigan the final game of the regular season as they needed overtime to beat Eastern Michigan that game, 65-62. Central Michigan won the game outright but failed to cover the number. And I think this has been one of the more overrated teams in this conference this year. They have a great record on paper, 18-13 overall, 12-6 in conference play. Yet they're still ranked 270th in Kempom. I think that's generous. Shot quality-wise, not a great team. Fundamentally, they're okay, but Bowling Green is much better. And while Bowling Green has a lot of transfers in this season, you know, it's basically a new look for this program. They're actually not that inexperienced in terms of D1 experience. They are the more experienced team here, and they're in good form. They won three of the last five games, including the last two against Western Michigan and Ball State. Uh, Bowling Green, they do a great job on the glass, which they should have a nice advantage in the rebounding game in this one. I also like the fact that they're disciplined defensively. They don't take too many fouls. They get to the free throw line themselves. I like Bowling Green in this matchup to win the game outright, so give me the Falcons in this one. 
Next up, we see Seton Hall and St. John's. This one's going to be 2.30 Eastern on Fox Sports 1, the quarterfinal round of the Big East Conference Tournament. St. John's going into the conference tournament is red hot, one of the hottest teams and really in the country, but in the conference for sure. Five-game win streak. They took down Georgetown twice, so, you know, nothing crazy there. They beat DePaul, but they also beat Creighton and they beat Butler, and that Butler win was on the road. So really impressive wins there for St. John's. A lot of blowouts you know, along the way. Their offenses look really, really strong. They scored at least 80 points in all five of those wins. The defense is also improving. They're now top 40 in adjusted defensive efficiency and top 40 in adjusted offensive efficiency. They're a great offensive rebounding team, but so is Seton Hall, so they should kind of uh, you know, cancel out there. St. John's does a great job of taking care of the basketball and forcing turnovers. Seton Hall ranked 294th in turnover percentage offensively. I talked about it before with Minnesota. It's really you know, worrisome to have turnover problems when you're playing in these neutral site games. And we saw Seton Hall play a couple of neutral site games in non-conference play against USC and Iowa, an eight-point loss and a 13-point loss. And that was a USC team that was not playing very well at the beginning of the season. Yes, they beat Missouri in a neutral site game, but they only won, by, won that game by six points. Missouri, you know, being the laughing stock of the SEC this year. So I, I don't really love Seton Hall in this spot. I think St. John's, with how well they're playing, and, you know, every game is a must-win game. They're in desperation mode in terms of their NCAA tournament hopes. I like St. John's in this one. I'm going to lay the points with the Red Storm. Next up, we see San Diego State and UNLV. This one, 530 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. You know, UNLV at the end of the you know Air Force game where they lost that game outright by in a blowout, 90 to 58. They were nine and nine overall and two and four in conference play. Looked like it was going to be a disaster of a season. However, here they are now playing San Diego State in the quarterfinals. Uh, UNLV finished the season 19 and 11 overall and 12 and six in conference play, and they just beat San Diego State back on March 5th by four points, 62 to 58. However, that was a home game, and this is a very, very strong San Diego State program that won this conference tournament last year, made it all the way to the championship game in the NCAA tournament. And sure, this team is a little bit different on paper, not as experienced, not as talented, but still a pretty experienced roster that is one of the best players in college basketball in Jaden Ledee. He really struggled in that game against UNLV on the road. I think we see a much better performance from him and overall the Aztecs in general offensively in this game as they shot a miserable 22.6% from two-point range in that ball game, seven of 31. San Diego State's bread and butter is their two-point field goals and getting to the free throw line. So it was no surprise to see them struggle offensively. But I think, like I said, we see a much sharper performance from them. Fundamentally, they're still a great team rebounding-wise. They take care of the basketball. And defensively, we know this program, one of the best defensive teams in college basketball. They're top 10 in adjusted defensive efficiency. I give credit to UNLV for playing so well down the stretch this season and beating San Diego State outright. But in this spot, I like San Diego State. They've got great neutral site experience. I mean, in, in, in non-conference play, we saw them sweep their neutral site games. And uh, they're just a great tournament team. So give me San Diego State in this one. And that's it. Those are the games for Thursday in college basketball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And put your college basketball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Manelli. Good luck.